return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But he said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet he has robbed me. But he said, Wherein have we robbed you? And he tithes and all. You are cursed with a curse, but you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now with you. Hear with said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up you the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessings, that there shall be no room enough to receive it. And 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 says, Remember this, whoever sows fairly will also reap fairly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. And I'm going to ask everyone to stand. This one is 
brother. Brother Mark. Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, 
gather the congregation together. Speak. Somebody say speak. Speak. Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water from, for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. So Moses took the rock from before the Lord as he commanded him. Verse 10 said, And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. Verse number 12 says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me, to hollow me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. For a few minutes, if I can use as a subject, when your frustration changes your destiny. Look at somebody and say, don't let frustration change your destiny. Amen. Have your seat. Father, we thank you now. Speak, all of you and none of me. We love you, O God. We honor you, Lord. We bless and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So listen, I, I, I believe I shared with you once before about how we as Christians have a task to stay on task. And in that, we've got to remember and realize that we cannot allow ourselves to react to things the same way the world does. Amen. That there are two ways that we are to approach a situation. There's two ways that we can, should I say. We can either we can either react to a situation or we can respond to a situation. The difference is when we react to a situation, our reaction is predicated by our emotion. Yes. Somebody ought to help me right there. Because the moment somebody makes you mad, it's easy for us to react. Amen. Because we're reacting based off of how they made us feel. Amen. But as a Christian, we've been given full example of how we are not to react, but we are to respond. Amen. The difference is reaction takes no thought. But responding requires you to think, process, and then proceed. Can I get a witness in here? When you respond, you have to think about it. You have to process it before you proceed so that God will get the glory out of the outcome. When the Bible declares to us that a soft answer turns away wrath, it takes two people to argue because one person arguing by himself looks rather foolish. And sometimes the softest answer is one that's never been spoken. So when we can when we can, can, can take a moment to respond, then that means we have a moment to think about what's going on. To think about who's in it with me. And to listen to find out how he wants me to proceed. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. There are a lot of fights that you have had because you reacted instead of responding. Amen. Come on, somebody. Right. And in this particular passage, we find out when we trace this whole story, we find out from the very beginning, Moses tried to get every excuse that he could uh-huh. not to even go back to Egypt after he left from killing that Egyptian. But when God told him, listen, there was an excuse. He says, I can't do it, God, because I'm of uncircumcised lips. He says, don't worry about it. You go. He said, they may not understand you, but your brother does. I'm going to speak to you. You speak to your brother. Your brother's going to speak to the people, and my will will be done. Have I got a witness? That's why I don't understand why there are people that sit in the church house that God speaks to regularly. That you will not open up your mouth and speak to someone else 
because you feel that you're not as eloquent as the next person. But I want you to understand, you don't have to be eloquent to get God's message across. All you have to do is share it with somebody close and let them speak it because they may be the one that God is using to relate the message. But we find now that after God alleviated the excuses because he allowed Aaron to go with him, we find that now when he's leading them through the wilderness, from the time they left Egypt until this very moment, all they did was complain. Amen. I wish I had just three people that wanted to help me right here because there's some of us that got a group of people with us that before they even tell you good morning, they're complaining about something. Before they even say the grace to bless their food, they're complaining about something. Before they even get the bonus check at work, they're complaining about something. Matter of fact, their middle name needs to be changed to complain because all they ever do is complain. And I don't know about y'all, and I don't know how many nerves y'all got, but I got a couple of nerves. And every so once in a while, you get some of them folks that tug on that one nerve that I forgot that was sitting there, and most of us call it our last nerve. They get the tug on that last nerve, and we find ourselves getting ready to react instead of respond Amen. because they didn't touch that at all. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a church full of super saved people this morning. No, no. Ain't nobody got mad. Ain't nobody. No, no. Matter of fact, somebody got mad at the gas station just the other day. I, uh, somebody cut you off. You was trying to get pump number two, and they swooped in when you was trying to back up. Come on, you. And you you, re you reacted with a couple of words that wasn't them love or lower. But it, come on, come on. There, I'm gonna stop. There, Mike, I'm gonna stop. I'm, listen, somebody gotta be saved. <laughs> So, so listen, so now we're at a spot where all Moses and Aaron heard was complaining. Yeah. When they left and they were walking to the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And the Bible declared that it was the Red Sea in front of them and Pharaoh and his army behind them. They complained, why did you bring us out here to die? Yeah. And what did God do? God told Moses, listen, because in the midst of all the hell that's breaking loose, yeah. he got to make sure he's talking that can hear him in the midst of all the rhetoric that's going on. And thank God that Moses had enough of a relationship with him that when all hell was breaking loose, because listen, 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 complaining sometimes can be louder than a freaking concert with a whole bunch of speakers and the band playing real loud. And I need you to understand that when you can hear from God, it can be turned up as loud as it needs to be, but when that still, quiet, still voice comes, you can of the craziness and move and respond and watch the reaction of the Lord. And now Moses was listening to God and God says, yeah, 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 they're complaining, they're fussing, but lift up your rod, lift up your staff real quick. And when he lifted up the staff, the Bible says that the Red Sea parted. Now everybody that was talking crap now had to shut up because they were complaining about something they had no control over, but God had all the control and had somebody in, come on here somebody. In other words, he had his captain in, in control, in charge, and all he wanted them to do was follow him as he followed God. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says he, he lifted up his rod, the Red Sea opened. The amazing thing was, when they crossed through, Bob, uh -huh. they crossed through on dry ground. The ground that they walked through wasn't wet even though it was in the middle of the ocean. Isn't that amazing? If that wasn't enough to hush the mouth of people, I don't know what it is. But now you're looking at Moses, listen, because we always look at the perspective of the children of Israel. But let's look at the perspective of Moses. Now Moses here, he did what God says. He brings them through. And then when he turns around, he hears God again say, raise up your staff. He runs up his staff. And as the army gets into the middle of the water, the Bible says that the water closed up and drowned everybody that was in pursuit of trying to take from you what you thought you was about to lose. And if that wasn't enough, it seems as if they got into the middle of the wilderness. And what did we get to say? Oh, we thirsty. Uh, it's something else. You brought us out here to die. We should have stayed in Egypt. Had we stayed in Egypt, we had three hots and a cot. It don't matter that we had the slave. It don't matter that we was eating pork and beans or pork and grits. If we had something to eat. And Moses said, hold on a minute. Hold on. God gave him the order to let his rod hit that bit of water. He touched the bit of water and the water became sweet. In other words, God allowed them to have good water. He allowed them to have manna. He allowed them to have quail. He allowed everything that they asked for. He allowed it to have and they still complain. Mother, mother, 
Brother Barry, this is this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. It, 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 you I, I heard you say, and, and, and people are this and people are that and people are the other. Well, brother, let me share with you this. People are going to be people, but when God puts you in charge of something, it ain't about the people. It's about your commitment to God. And when God is ready to shut it down, he'll shut it down and the people will fall subject to the power of the Holy Ghost, not to the voice of mother, unless... God says, Mother, speak, yeah. and then I take care. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Remember, Mother, I want to just encourage you with this one. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. Remember the ones that complained the most uh. through the instruction that God gave his servant yes. didn't make it to the promise. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I want to encourage you, don't miss the promise because you begin to, re to react to the ignorance of the people. Yeah. But in other words, stay the course and understand that it ain't your battle anyway. Your journey is predestined by God. Your destination is predestined by God. Do not miss walking into the promise because you wind up striking something that you were supposed to speak to. Yeah. Yeah. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. So the Bible declared yes, Lord. that God gave Moses an order. Yes. But listen, watch this. Not only did he give Moses an order, uh, but he gave Aaron an order. Yes. See, because remember, Moses was the one that was assigned the task to go and get him. Amen. But Aaron was assigned the task to translate Amen. in the event that folks didn't know. Yeah. So in other and watch this. And if we think about this, the Bible tells us that two are better than one. Amen. All right, all right. And I truly believe that God allowed for both of them to get the order. Just in case one of them didn't hear it clearly. Because all right, all right. All right. <laughs> it's always easy for you to say, I didn't hear that. Right. But if me and him is rocking together, yeah. he's going to hear what I didn't hear, just like I'm going to hear what he didn't hear. Yeah. And my job is to keep him accountable like his job is to keep me accountable. Yeah. Because when God says for us to do something, yeah. no matter how it goes, he's not going to just keep me accountable, he's going to keep him accountable too. Yeah. And I want you to know I could go to hell all by myself. Yes, Lord. So if I'm going to mess up, I can mess up by, me, my, by myself. Yes. So the Bible says that he gave Moses and Aaron an order. Uh-huh. And he says, listen to me. He says, I want you to go now. Yes. And I want you to speak to the rock. Yes, Lord. Moses is in the middle of some frustration. Yes. Simply because no matter what God allowed for him to do, uh -huh. It wasn't good enough for the people so true. to trust in the Lord mm -hmm. with all of their heart. Yes. And I don't know about you, but when your kids, you tell them over and over and over to do something, they don't do it the way you tell them to do it. Yes. Frustration. Yes. 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 Every once in a while, yes. I don't know about y'all, but I grew up when well, mama got frustrated uh -huh. and you was too close. Yeah, you, you, you might have caught a backhand. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody grew up in that area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when Mama got frustrated, her reaction, yeah. it was faster than a Mike Tyson punch. Yeah, yeah. She would pop you in the lips. Your lips would yeah. swing and come yeah. back. It would swing the next week and come back the next week and then tell you that you just got hit. Uh -huh. I wish I had somebody. Uh -huh. But Mother would pop you because it was her reaction. And then she would stop and think. Uh -huh. Because she would her mind she would process what she did yeah. after the fact that she did it. Amen. She can't change it. But then her disposition changed. Yes. Amen. Because she thought about had I just spoke to you. Yeah. Right. I may have gotten a different reaction. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when you hit me, yes. even though I did not say what I felt about the way you hit me, uh -huh. it still lodged in my mind that I got hit for something that I don't think I was wrong for. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because she reacted instead of responding. Yes. And so now Moses is at a place where he's frustrated. Yes. Moses is at a place now where no matter what I do, if they was hungry and God spoke to you and you fed them, they was thirsty and I made sure they had something to eat. Everything that they needed, everything that they needed, they complained, they complained. We was only supposed to be 11 days on this trip. Now here it is. We all these years, I'm just trying to get to where you tell us to get. And no matter how far we get or how close we get, it's always, every time we take three steps forward, we wind up taking six steps back. And he's been listening to God from the time he went to Egypt until the time that he's sitting right now. He's been listening and 
responding and not reacting. No matter what the people did, he still responded and not reacted. He still thought about what Jesus said. He still made sure he processed what God told him to do. And then he proceeded forward with what God told him to do. And every single time he did that, God showed up. Come by to tell you that sometimes even in the midst of your madness, God will still show up. Because the Bible simply says that he told Moses... And Aaron, he says, I want you to go this time and I want you to just speak to the rock. Mm -hmm. And if I can just break this down, can I explain this to y'all real quick? Mm -hmm. The first time that he told Moses to strike the rock. Mm -hmm. This is something, when I found this in my research, it kind of blew my mind, Pastor West. He said, my research turned and it shared this way. The first time that he struck the rock, it was supposed to be, and Isaiah talks about this, it was supposed to be him painting the picture of Christ mm. Amen. being the rock. Mm. It painted the picture of him having to be struck mm. in order to introduce salvation. Yes. But it was not meant for it to go beyond the one strike. So when he told him the second time to speak to the rock, this time he was supposed to uh, 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 reiterate to him how speaking could allow the same result as striking. And at the end of the day, the water that came out was to represent the water that came from his side, the water that was living water. I'm surprised. I'm sorry. It got me excited when I, when I, when I read it. He, he, he said when he struck the rock, it was supposed to represent the striking of Jesus. When the water came out, it was supposed to represent the living water that came from his side. And so therefore, the second time when he told him to speak to the rock, it was supposed to be able to allow them to be re reassured that the rock of their salvation had already been introduced, that although he hadn't been into the world yet, it was supposed to be there, the picture that God was painting. And so when he went and struck the rock, what it did is it gave them and wiped out what it was supposed to be and allowed them to think something different because the example that it would have, it would have established was that Jesus would have been struck over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Not the witness that he received at the same time, but that he would have been beat once, he would have went on about his business, then he came back, he'd have been beat again. Then he would have, y'all catch that? Y'all with me? Did you catch that? Yeah. Catch that? Yeah. It, it, it kind of blew me away when I was reading that. I said, wow. I, I, never, I, never, even, I never even saw that before. Mm -hmm. And so now, Moses is at a place now where, because we believe that Moses was being punished just because he struck it instead of spoke to it. But it was more so because now he erased what God was trying to do with giving the children of Israel a brief synopsis of who Jesus Christ really was going to be. The rock of our salvation. How have I got a witness? And so now we find that Moses is now going to God. Took him, he says, take the rock. Isn't it amazing? I, that's the first I was reading that. I was like, God, you set him up. <laughs> you set him up because you told him to speak to him. You already know he's mad. And you told him to speak, and you gonna give him something to hit the rock with. You know God. You already knew what he was thinking before he even got out there. He was already mad when he was listening to you. And so his mind was already made up that he was going to do something different because these folks had got him to the place where he was teed off. And so he heard from God, and he did what God told him to do. But my Bible tells me that you are supposed to be slow to speak. Slow to anger yes. and swift to listen. Yes. All right, all right. But when you get to the place of frustration, yeah. <laughs> you listen as far as you're going to listen. Yes. You mad like you ain't never been mad. Yeah. And you got some words that's been built up on the inside of you that you're going to let out real quick. Because now I'm at a place of reacting and I'm not a place of responding. You didn't push that button. Yeah. I wish I had somebody. And when the elevator get there and the door is open, you better place yourself for what's about to happen. Because you didn't push me to a place of no return. I come by to tell you, you tugged on a nerve that I forgot I had. But since you taking me back to where I came from, I may as well act real blackish up in here and do what I feel because you didn't got me back. And the Bible says, listen to it, listen. 
Listen to it. Listen to it. He he called them a name. He called them a name. Yeah. Preacher, he called them a name without cussing them out. He, he walked up to them. He said, look here, you rebels. And if you read that in the Bible, the Bible has a, an exclamation point when it says rebels. He, 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 he cussed them out without saying a cuss word. He, he put them on notice to let them know y'all didn't did it now. Now, y'all didn't got me to that place now. Y'all, y'all gonna make me take off my nails and put some Vaseline on my face. Y'all, come on, I wish I had some folk up in here that have got your nerves wrecked once or twice and you just received that he hit the rock, but he didn't hit it once. 
but he hit the rock twice. I can only imagine that he looked at the rock the first time and he said, Trump make me sick. And he looked at it the second time and he said, he still make me sick. Have I got a witness? Now look at here. God told him that you didn't do what I told you to do. Your destiny was the promised land. But because you did it your way, I need you to know that you'll never walk in to inherit what I promised. And I want y'all to know, even though he sinned, God still allowed for his will to be done. What are you talking about, preacher? The Bible tells me that in the last days, there are going to be men and women preaching folks into heaven while they're on their way to hell. So in other words, everybody in the pulpit ain't necessarily on their way to heaven. That's why you got to know the word for yourself. Have I got a witness? That's why I make sure that I got my errand with me. Because if something ain't right, my errand will tell me, now, Pastor, now you know that wasn't correct. And it makes me go home, stop and think, start to process before I proceed. Because my destiny is my promise. And I don't want nobody to make me miss my promise. Have I got a witness? And later on in this, in this story, the Moses began to plead with God. But God told him, listen here, brother, you was doing good at first. But then you decided to do things way. Chantel. And then God told him, he says, I want you to go up on that mountain. I want you to look to the east. I want you to look to the west. I want you to look to the north. And I want you to look to the south. And when you look, I want your eyes to see that thing that you'll never, ever, ever have. And I But I tell y'all, if I saw what I was about to miss, I probably would have went back and punched the lights out of everybody I saw because I was frustrated. I already missed out. So I may as well finish that thing that I started. But God allowed Moses to be all right until the day that he called him home. And how is it that he took some time and he trained up Joshua who would take them into, into the promise. And if I know I'm not going to get what I was promised, but I had to train somebody else to get what was supposed to be mine, I don't know how good my attitude really would be. But Moses got himself together and did what he had to do. But I want you all to know frustration will change your destiny. Frustration will detour your path. Frustration will clog your hearing. Frustration will make you say some things that your spirit is not willing to receive. Frustration will have you seeing things that you're not supposed to see. Frustration will have you doing some things you're not supposed to do. Frustration will have you quitting some things you ain't supposed to quit. Frustration will have you walking away from stuff you shouldn't walk away from. I want to tell somebody when you get frustrated, that's the time to wave your hands, to lift up a praise, to shout hallelujah, to call on the name of the Lord. Because frustration could mess me up, but my praise, my, my, my praise. 
just like John, God is on his job 24 hours a day. <clears throat> the Bible says that he is the mind of Judah. Yes, Lord. He says that he never sleeps nor slumber. Uh -huh. Can I share with something with y'all? The devil ain't the mind of Judah, but he don't sleep either. He is on his job 24-7. Watch this. And the moment, the moment that you get to the level of frustration mm -hmm. is the opportunity that he has. Yes, Lord. And the moment that he comes in and dangles yeah. something in your face, yeah. it's the time he didn't have a conversation with God and said, let me get him down. I bet you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. Mm -hmm. And listen, we know that if we tell the truth, we shame the devil. All right, all right. And I'm going to be the first one, Pastor West, to raise my hand. And tell you, when I was frustrated, the devil dangled something and I took the bait. Yes, yes, yes. There's been times and time and time again, I took the bait. Yes, yes. And, I, and listen, even though God didn't show me what I missed at that moment, mm -hmm. I only know it's something and I'll be able to get the revelation of it soon enough. All right, all but I want you to understand something. Because of salvation, because of grace, because of mercy, we are not in the same condition that Moses was in. All right. Because when Jesus died for the deviation of our of our sin, when he died, that he could change the complexity of how things happen. That right there allowed for grace and mercy to be established and introduced into our lives. That even when we mess up, God allows us to know that He's another, He's a God of another opportunity. Yes, yes. But we're not supposed to take that for granted. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Yes, Listen to me. <clears throat> when the enemy has opportunity, mm -hmm. he will do what he's been sent here to do. Yeah, amen. Some of us pass, and some of us fail. Amen. But the Bible declares that a just man. Mm -hmm. Falls down seven times. But what makes him just is he gets back up. Gets back in line. And continues to proceed. We've got to adopt the attitude and the mindset that we recognize when the devil is poking. And, and I'm going to give you this because this is what I tell the devil when he gets the message with me. I tell him this. Devil, if you haven't got a new ride in hell, mm. leave me alone. All right, all right. Because I'd have been on everything. I'd have been on every ride you got in hell. Amen. I'd have rode so many roller coasters twice. Amen. They ain't fun. Yes. They ain't scary. Mm -hmm. So unless you got something new for me down there, yes. to show you that you ain't keeping on go ahead and leave me alone. Amen. Last Sunday. Last Sunday was Easter, right? Last Sunday, enemy was busy. We had some things going on over at the other church with some other folk, just busy. And when I recognized it and decided to respond instead of react, that made the devil mad. So Sunday night, my wife wakes me up and tells me I have to rush my youngest son to the hospital. Severe chest pain. Mm. So what did he decide? I can't get you, so I jump on your son. <coughs> but I come by to tell you what you thought you were gonna do still didn't work. <laughs> because before I could leave the house, every prayer warrior that we knew was praying for him. Amen. And he's up, moving around, fine, everything is good, strain muscle. But I want you to understand that if the enemy can't get you, he will try to attach yeah. yeah. himself to somebody yeah. that's close yeah. to you. Yeah. Don't let frustration Amen. be the open portal Amen. that the enemy comes to Amen. to shift your destiny. Yes, Lord. All of us should have destination Amen. heaven Amen. in our minds and in our hearts. And don't let the enemy make you miss the pearly yes, gates yes, because you responded, you reacted yes. instead of responding. Yes. Yes. Have I got a witness? Amen. Let your response Speak well of who you believe. Amen. That is God. Amen. And I guarantee you that the rivers of living water 
will begin to flow the situ flood the situation. Yeah. And will cause everything that's not like him mm -hmm. to either fall subject to him or to get away from you. All right, all right. Have I got a witness? Amen. So to everyone in here, yes. respond. Think about it. Yes. Hear it. Process it. Because if we move based off of what we feel, Amen. we're liable to miss the promise and cause someone else to miss the promise. Amen. Amen. If you don't have an errand in your life, get you one. All right. And don't get you one that's just agree with everything you say. You Amen. Amen. Yes. When you're married, you have one. Yes. <laughs> My wife, if I, she distracts me sometimes, I'll be. Thinking I'm saying something in the word, and I say something, she goes, and you always do commercials when the dogs don't understand something, they go like this. I say something, my wife will go. And next thing you know, I hear pages. She's looking in the Bible. And uh, so when we get home, she say, okay, you need to show me. You need to show me where that was. And if I can't show her, then we have a conversation. And if I can show her, then she said, okay, I missed that one. But if you don't have that accountability, guess what happens? I stand here and mislead you off of something that I'm reacting to instead of responding to. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Yes. Pastor West, Lady West keep you straight, don't she? Oh. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> listen, listen. That's why she can say, I, I won't complain the way she does. Because she understands. You know, listen, our wives got them invisible whips and they ain't even got to pull them off. They just look at us. They got to look that we understand. Come on, just somebody. Like my wife right now, she just looked at her watch. Like, okay. <laughs> I don't even look at her, but I can see her. I can feel her. I understand. Because we developed that. That's our errands. We got a witness. Everybody gets you an errand. In the name of Jesus. But what I'm asking, I'm asking Cedar Grove. I'm asking Cedar Grove to be Mother Maddie's errand. Yeah. Not one person. That's not yeah. like a church. That's yeah. Yeah. Because she has been the Moses of Cedar Grove yes, Lord. for all of these years. Yes, 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 yes. And now we don't want her to be frustrated yes, to the place to where she misses her destiny. Amen. Because she strikes instead of speaks to. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. I don't know about you, but you love on her. Yes. That's why I was glad when she started playing and you started singing. Bring me my flowers. Yes, Lord. Because I'm going to let you know right now mm -hmm. that one ounce of appreciation mm -hmm. goes a long way. Yes, Lord. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. So Cedar Grove, Pastor and Lady, First Lady Nichols, we love y'all. Amen. We appreciate y'all. We want you to continue to keep moving forward. The enemy wants you to stop and the doors close, but I rebuke that in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Let's keep it pushing. Amen. With all heads by the all eyes closed. <clears throat> this is a time in the service where if you don't know Christ for the pardon of your sins, you want to rededicate your life. This is a time for you now. If that's you, just raise your hand. You say, I want to rededicate my life or give my life to Christ for the first time. And the second call is if you're not a member of a church and you're looking to join a fellowship, there are two here. And both will be more than happy and welcome to accept you in as a member. If that is you, just raise your hand. Oh, 
friend you made. Let's get prepared for our love offering. 